This podcast is brought to you by GBS, where you'll find flexible education that fits around your busy lifestyle. For more information on GBS courses, visit globalbanking.ac.uk. Well, hello everyone. We've uh, great privilege today to have Sanja Krishna uh, to come and uh, be interviewed and to um, speak about her life and her profession. Now, as I, I've only met Sanja once before, but um, I was astounded to find out that she's a brain surgeon. And uh, so you're very welcome. Thank you. And uh, we've got a few a few uh, questions for you, and hopefully we can explore, explore for for GBS students. Um, the trajectory of your of your studies, yeah. your profession, and what it gives you, what it what it does for you, and um, why why you've come into this really. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, that sounds great. So, Sanja, um, could you tell us a bit about your early life? Uh, yeah, so well, I was born in South East London mm-hmm. in Lewisham. Um, London both girl. my parents, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> London girl. Mm-hmm. Um, both my parents were from India, um, but um, we grew up in South East London. So I was born in Lewisham Hospital, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, I had, yeah, my mum stayed at home. My dad worked. My mum used to be a science and maths teacher, but she took some time out when me and my little sister were quite little. Mm-hmm. Um, had a really like normal South East London childhood. Lots of nice things when I was in school holidays mm, mm, so going to parks uh, going to museums yeah. especially going to libraries so mm. I was always a massive massive bookworm um, yeah, yeah. and I was quite lucky because I had uh, parents that sort of encouraged that in me um, yeah. so I remember we used to we used to do a bit like a bit of like a bit of work in the morning so maybe a little bit of maths a little bit of science because my mum mm. was a teacher on school mm. holidays mm. Um, and then after that what we would literally go to the park have a picnic and then we'll go to the library yeah. um, and then choose books and yeah it was really really nice that's <laughs> great isn't it so so in your and your mum so she was she was a teacher and, and was she impressed when you took the decision to to go into the medical profession uh, funnily enough um, I always say like I probably have the first Asian parent parents that did actively didn't want me to do wow. medicine wow. just because my my granddad was a doctor my mum saw that it was quite a hard life yes um, and I think she was worried that um it would take its toll on me yeah. but I think it's quite I think I'm quite lucky because I think the medical system now is very very different from what it used to be essentially right. yes. um my dad was always very artsy like my little sister is yeah um and um I think he he was quite keen for me to do something like English or law or something yeah. Yeah. but um I wanted to do law for a little while but I have a tendency to cry every time I argue with people <laughs> so that sort of uh, put yeah. a stop to that <laughs> what were you good at in school um, so I was good at science and maths. Um, I was so, I was good at English and uh, languages as well, but um, my strong point was definitely science and maths, um, and that was like throughout uh, primary school and throughout secondary school as well. Yeah. wasn't the greatest at art, which really? is quite funny because you would think as a surgeon yeah. I would, yeah. I would yeah. be vaguely good at it. Yeah, good with your hands. Um, yeah, yeah, good yeah. with your hands, but yeah, okay at replicating things, but never had that creative streak uh, yeah. of music and yeah. art. So in college. Oh. Oh. What happened at college then? You did A-levels, the usual? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, essentially I went to, um, I, well, I had, so I went to primary school and then I went to secondary school. Um, secondary school, I was super lucky to have like amazing teachers um, who, mm-hmm. it was like a, quite a, a normal comprehensive school in South East London. Yes. Um, and I had like really good teachers that really encouraged me to take risks because I used to be quite shy. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. so they got me into doing drama. They got me like to do competitions in maths and science, yeah. especially around GCSEs. I had some great teachers that really saw that love of science in me yeah. um, and helped me sort of get the GCSEs that I needed to mm-hmm. then pursue um, doing, G- doing my A-levels mm-hmm. in college. Um, and I think that's essentially where everything sort of started. Mm-hmm. So I did sci- uh, so I did chemistry, biology, maths, um, geography, and I did an English AS level, which mm-hmm. uh, I wasn't as good at yeah, yeah, <laughs> as yeah. the rest of them. Yeah. Um, but I was, yeah, I was really, really fortunate to have great teachers that really yeah. encouraged me. So. so then what happens? I mean, what happens then after the A-levels? What, what, what happened then? What's next? So after the A-levels, um, so I applied for medical school and I was really lucky to get into a couple of them. Mm. Um, I chose Manchester Medical School yeah. um, because um, I'm sure we are, we've talked about before, I, I love my music as well. Yeah. So um, yeah. it was very, it was a great place yeah. for, for me to go, which I, which I could sort of like explore the social side and also yeah. do the sciences and it was a great um, course mm-hmm. as well. You've got a slight 
Manchester teens. I do, do you, uh, yeah, I do, because it. I was there for quite a while. So yeah. what, because in medical school, you can... Um, so I did the five years of medical school, but I also did an intercalated degree. Mm -hmm. So that's essentially where you do the last year of a degree, a science degree, and you get that degree as well. So I did that in neurosciences. Mm. So I was up there for quite a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, funnily enough, I don't know why. It, come, it sort of comes and goes yeah, a little yeah, bit. But yeah. I think because I'm living in Liverpool now, yeah. it's sort of, I think, a, bit, a little bit more pronounced. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, and... and what, what is what is a you know what is a medical course like? I mean, is it stressful? I mean, what is it? Yeah, so it's it's a lot of hours. Um, I would say, uh, so the course that I did in Manchester is called like a PBL course. So it's problem based learning. So it was perfect mm. for me mm. because I don't do very well in sort of just sitting in lectures. Mm -hmm. um, I had a tendency because I like the social life as well to mm -hmm. to maybe not pay as much attention in the lectures as yeah. I should have probably yeah. been doing. Mm. Um, but the PBL side of it was really key um, for me because you go they give you a case and you go away and you do your research about it and then yeah. you come back and you sort mm. of discuss it um, in a group amongst yourselves. Yeah. Um, but it, it was a lot more hours than you do like in un other undergraduate oh, degrees yeah. Yeah. Um, and you do essentially basic sciences for the first two years which is normal university and then you go on to placement um, yes, and that's yeah. working within hospitals yeah. um, and so then your week becomes more of a normal working week and your school like your university holidays get drastically yeah. shortened as yeah. well mm -hmm. um, and then obviously you've got like exams and things like that and you're encouraged to do extra things yeah. um, outside if you want to pursue a speciality as well. Yeah, and, so, and then what, when was the decision then to go into the brain, so to speak? Um, so weirdly enough, I think it started very early on. Um, so I always, I've always sort of had a bit of an interest in the brain. And my dad was diagnosed with Parkinson's when we were, when mm. we were younger. Mm. Um, and I think that sort of piqued a little bit of an interest. Mm. Um, but initially at medical school, I was thought I was going to do neurology, which is the medical side of like mm. the brain, mm -hmm. um, rather than the surgical side of the brain. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember when I was at university, um, I was you do a placement in different specialities, essentially. And I was doing my neurosurgery placement. And I had this amazing uh, female registrar which is the level that I'm at now, mm -hmm. um, who basically let me scrub into an operation, let me assist in an operation, and like mm -hmm. literally within an hour, completely changed my career trajectory, oh, <laughs> decided yeah. to do science, yeah. to search mm -hmm. surgery, sorry. I mean, it's such a responsibility to have, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, it really is. It's, it's quite emotionally exhausting, as well as being physically exhausting, mm -hmm. because I'm sure you can imagine you're walking around a hospital, and even if you're not walking, you're standing, yeah. and you're constantly sort of active. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, it is, it's a difficult job, but at the same time, I really enjoy being able to look after people that are quite vulnerable yes. and maybe don't. And mm. I enjoy the fact that in surgery, you can actually you can do operations and you can actually make a massive difference to a person mm -hmm. in a very short amount of time. Um, yeah, so it's it's it's, mm, it's yeah. a it's a real opportunity and I'm very lucky to have yeah. the opportunity to do it. Really, gosh, it is. I mean, I'm sure we're we're all absolutely an admiration of you. <laughs> uh, it's, it's 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 fantastic. Dude, um, what's your working week look like most of the time then? Oh, okay, yeah. So um, it's it's not a myth that it's uh, very very long hours. Mm, mm, mm. Um, so I would say you generally do so normal days start at eight o'clock. Meant to end at five. Mm. If you end by six, seven, that's mm. probably good going. Um, and the on-call shifts, when you're more junior, they tend to be 12 hours. Whereas when you're more senior, so at my level, you tend to be 24 hours or 48 hours over a weekend. Yeah. So the hours actually build up quite quickly. Mm. Um, you're meant to have zero days as well, but obviously with problems with staffing and things mm. that are going on in the NHS at the moment, and yeah. mm. um, that can sometimes be a bit difficult to take. And also, to try and get the training opportunities. Mm -hmm. In surgery, you really need the hands-on time yeah. um, to be doing these operations. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you don't get that time, then you're, you don't progress as a surgeon. Yeah. Um, and so unfortunately, sometimes you do find that you have to take initiative and come in on your days off and things like that. So you yeah. get that opportunity so yeah. you can progress. Yeah, yeah. Um, so are you able to tell us what your opinion is of the NHS at the moment? <laughs> uh, well, well, I'm always the biggest fan of the NHS. I think it's the greatest thing. Mm. Um, and I feel very, very lucky to be able to work in mm. it. Mm. Um, Apart from that, I think that's, that's I'll just leave it yeah, at that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, I think it's wider than our compass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. um, so, but then what does, um, what did you as a South London girl, what, what do you think of, um, 
what do you think of uh, education as a catalyst for kind of social mobility, for, yeah. for, for lifelong learning and all of that? I'm a big, big advocate of education being a really key thing in um, whether it's here, whether it's South East London, whether it's um, in other countries that are less developed and things. Education has been shown to be like a really positive correlating mm. factor for people having independence. Mm. Um, and certainly um, education never has to come at a cost. So mm. I can say categorically the education that I got in my comprehensive school was top notch mm. Um, mm. as well. And mm. uh, I think it really does open up doors for you. Yeah. Um, and mm. obviously education isn't just sciences and maths and things like that. There's all yeah. the creative side of everything yeah. as well. Mm. So I think it's really, I was very lucky to be in a school where they encouraged the creative side, so the drama side and all of that, yeah. as well as the sciences and things. Yeah. And I think um, you need to make sure that you give everybody the opportunity to learn the way that they yeah. can learn. Yeah. Yeah. So, and as well as letting them learn what they yeah. want to learn as well. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, with universities increasing tuition fees and yeah. it, it made me very sad because when the tuition fees went up to £10,000 a year, I certainly know that coming from the background that I was from, mm, mm, yeah. that would have been a massive deterrent yeah. if I knew I was going to graduate with £100,000 debt. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely, I think education is really important. Yes. I mean, I was lucky. I was the, you know, I was a benefactor. I, I, I um, my, when I did my degree, we had a, we had a grant, mm. you know, and we came yeah. out with no debt at yeah. all. And that was lovely, mm. um, looking back on it now. Yeah. Um, so but you were telling me something, what is it, the combat? The, what is, tell me something oh, about Oh, yes. Com tell me what it is. Yeah. What, what's, the, the, what's the full so, time? So at the moment I'm doing a, I've taken what's called an out of program mm -hmm. research break. Mm -hmm. So it's three years to complete a research program. So it's a PhD essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very lucky because um, I'm working in Liverpool at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm working at Alder Hay Children's Hospital. So I was given an opportunity to do a, P a PhD in children's mm -hmm. brain tumours. And so the combat project it's called, it's essentially um, an acronym for for um, like core post-operative morbidity in paediatric brain tumours. Mm -hmm. And essentially what we're trying to do is um, standardise the way that um, adverse outcomes and harms in paediatric brain tumours when they've had surgery are reported. Mm -hmm. And that's really important because if you look at um, two clinical trials, and there's very few clinical trials because uh, it's, such a, it's such a rare disease, if you see mm -hmm. what I mean. Mm -hmm. So um, if you look at two clinical trials and one says, okay, this kid has got this many seizures within a month, and the next trial says, oh, uh, this kid took a month and a half to have a seizure. Mm -hmm. You can't compare the two because mm -hmm. it's not like for like. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially the international community has raised a... Um, has raised a point that there needs to be a standardised way of reporting these things in all research and clinical services. Yeah. So that's my job for the yeah. next three years. Um, so that's, it's brilliant. It's really exciting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so that, then you'll finish your PhD with, within that yeah. kind of framework. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm six months in, well, a little bit over six months into it, mm. um, all going on course at the moment, which is yeah. good. Um, yeah. I've had the opportunity to present it internationally. And what's really encouraging about it is we've got lots of centres all across the world. So as I was saying, like in South America, mm. um, in the USA, in Europe, in India, in Africa as well, Ghana, lots of places that have expressed interest in being part of this yeah. because essentially it, it consists of a survey. Um, yeah. Really good. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, let's, a couple of a few a couple of kind of rudimentary or, or uh, questions on on, the, on uh, the more mundanities, I suppose. Are you a deadline meter or a, or a deadline <laughs> prevaricator in life? Oh, I'm always. Someone who's, um, I'm very aware that this is going to be out on, yeah. uh, out in the public. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I'm definitely, I'm someone that basically, I know the deadline's there, but I tend to work better closer to the deadline than yeah, further away to the deadline. Me too. Yeah, yeah. I, and, yeah. I, I had a publishing, I had a publishing ooh. contract and they didn't give me a deadline, so I just didn't write it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's very true, exactly, exactly. Mm. If I know I need to do something by this point, yeah. then it, it certainly lights a fire under. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is, is it possible to answer this one then, a morning person or an evening person, given your yeah, profession? Yeah, definitely. Um, I am very much known for wanting to stay in bed during the morning and <laughs> I'm very much a sort of evening night owl person, uh, yeah, yeah. which weirdly enough kind of goes a little bit with the night shifts. Yes, but. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tea or coffee? Oh, tea, hundred percent. Yeah, you can be my friend. Yes. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. You, you know, what is it? Coffee. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't like coffee. I don't. Yeah. I don't really. I don't even like coffee flavored things. Yeah, yeah it's just never got into it. No. Um, and so, what would you give to? So, 
uh, GBS students are are um, often coming from other countries. Mm. They, they're often um, and they're often doing their courses part time mm. um, and working as well. Have you got any general advice about education to give to them? Um, generally, I would say that um, not. All educational paths are direct, so it's completely and utterly okay to sort mm. of like look like you're weaving. That's exactly what I did. Mm. It took me longer to get to the stage that I am than it has taken some of my colleagues to get mm. to the stage. But at the end, it's about choosing the path that's right for you. Mm. Part time is right for you, then that's that's the best way of doing it. Um, never try and stick to someone else's timelines. Always stick mm. to yours. Mm. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're a treasure. Thank it's, you. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm. We, we we really support our NHS, don't we? Yes. And um, and it's one of the. Well, they, they said it's almost like the nation's religion now, isn't yes, it? The, yeah. 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 And it, and uh, so, do, do you feel do you feel in your profession that people value you? Um, I think it's a difficult question to answer. I think they do when they need us, but at the same time, I think it's difficult because obviously, with everything that's going on in the NHS and the the difficulty with accessing services. I can understand that there is a lot of anger, mm. um, but whether that's sort of misplaced anger at the healthcare professionals rather mm. than sort of mm. at the actual politicians that are yeah. causing these issues rather yeah. than uh, yeah. rather than us. But um, as as I said before, a big 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 fan of the NHS, yeah. and like yeah. I will never never leave it. So <laughs> fantastic. So you're not going to go to Australia to go? No, no. no unfortunately, you stuck with me for a little bit. No, yeah. that's, good. that's good. Um, yeah. Well, Sanja, it's been a great pleasure to thank have, you for to having me. And then it's it's lovely to to learn about this kind of career that you're you're building <laughs> and the, and where you've come from as well. Mm. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. <laughs>